Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, B1B Flyer here, and we are going to continue working on these white miniatures. Uh, you know, I did a previous video that showed how to get a basic white done relatively quickly using some dry brush and wash techniques. We're going to continue on and finish these in an actual scheme uh, with the uh, Battletech Universe, the uh, uh, Karita uh, Benjamin Regulars, I think it's the 17th. So, what I've done since you saw the last video is I've taken some model color oily steel and gone and put a couple of layers on anywhere I wanted to be metallic so the gun barrels uh, the jump jet pack here so on all the other other models I did a little bit of uh, some of the detail on the legs and things like that so what we're gonna do now though is the scheme calls for stripes so the red brown stripes of the unit are gonna kind of go throughout and it's, it, it's no description you can put them however you like they don't have to be mirror image you can do random on one side or however you want but that's what we're going for so in order to do that I've got a little bit of uh, burnt cadmium red and uh, we're gonna highlight that really quickly with a tan skin for uh, from uh, video game color so we'll uh, start with the regular base stripes and this will help you doing any stripe type of scheme so just keep that in mind there's a lot of stripes in a lot of the units in Battletech Universe or if you're you know, using this technique for something else you know I do stress a lot about having thinned paint however in this case um, you don't want it to be too thin I mean if it comes out of the bottle and it looks relatively relatively uh, smooth and it's not real real chunky put some on my hand here and you can kind of see that the, the, the reason is is that if, if you put it on your skin the little natural creases and stuff and if it runs I'll get some some water here and get it going here and if, if you put it on your hand and it starts running through all little crap you don't want to do stripe detail with that type of uh, type of um, thinned paint it's gonna go all over the place and you're just gonna end up getting frustrated so you do want it a little bit thicker um, so if it comes out of the bottle and you know the way to test it is you, know, you can put it on your like I said put it on your hand but uh, also be wary of putting too much water on your brush. Uh, speaking of brushes, I'm using a Simply Simmons, this is a synthetic zero, so I don't normally use this brush, but I'm just uh, showing this is a relatively in, uh, inexpensive brush. I think my wife got a few of them for me for less than $10, and uh, I've just been messing around with it just because I like to kind of try different brushes and different um, materials that they're made out of. The Kalinske obviously are nicer sable brushes and things like that, but you know, you don't need to spend an arm and a leg to be able to do this. So to, to follow the, the detail of what we want to do, you know, I'm going to put some stripes on the legs. So look around on the miniature and see, and I can see already there's a natural kind of a vertical line going here. So um, in order to make less work, I am just going to follow the natural panel relief lines that are already on the miniature. It doesn't say you have to do that. It's just that the intent of this is that I'm not spending hours and hours and stressing over you know, a perfectly straight line. If there's already a seam and a little panel that's already got some detail around its edges and I can just fill that in, paint by paint by numbers essentially, then I'm gonna do that. You might see that because of your, whatever your paint is uh, thin to, that there's gonna be some color showing through. It's not gonna go on 100% evenly. And that's fine. You may, in, in all likelihood, will need to do a couple of layers. And because you're going over white, anything that you move with the brush, it's gonna show through because it's, you know, the brightest color you could put so now I'm just following this angular line up you know and I'll just kind of work it and connect it and I'm supporting my my hand I don't normally touch miniatures like this if I can avoid it but um, you know set it down or get yourself a miniature holder or uh, do whatever works for you but the, the less of you just holding it up with both hands trying to to make those details the better um, if you have a brush that you've been using a lot to do other things and the tip isn't very uh, solid anymore don't use that brush you're just gonna end up 
unhappy with the result, I think. So, you know, if it means breaking out a new brush or maybe a uh, one that you don't use other than specific details, I have a lot of those. I have ones that I just won't use for general purpose work because I don't want that brush to not be useful for the specific things I want it to do. So, and there's plenty of cost of, you know, cost friendly or affordable brushes that can do that job. And, you know, the synthetic ones, eventually the tips are going to curve and, and quote break or whatever. But uh, if you're only using it for these kinds of details and things, then it's really going to last a while. So, so as you, as you can see here, you know, I'm just getting the stripe to follow and obviously I'll do the same thing on the other side. So now I'm just kind of looking around for where I want these natural stripes to go right across the top of the, the knee armor is a real easy one to just pick out and go, yep, I want to do that. You know, they don't need to connect. And if you're doing a different type of stripe pattern, obviously, you know, go with whatever, whatever makes you happy. This is supposed to be fun. So don't, don't stress over it. I think I'm going to follow this, uh, this other line on the leg here. So I'm just going to roll right up on this. You can see I'm, I'm not 100% moving my brush in line with certain things like I like to talk about. And the reason is what I'm doing right now is because I'm following an edge, a raised edge, I'm, I'm running my brush along that just to get the paint right up to the edge first and kind of give myself a guide. And then I'm going to thicken it up a little bit and now I'll turn the miniature. follow the line and what I like to do with because then like I said I have to do more than likely a, you know two coats to get this to even out and look smooth is you know I'll do one side and then okay I'll match it on the other one and then just work back and forth and then once I've done the whole miniature then I'll go back and do it all over again that way I haven't missed anything because if I go and touch up this side and then I forget that side or whatever that's you know it's how I tend to be so uh, another thing you can do while you're waiting for this is you can put a wash on the metallics because you're gonna want a little bit of depth. So I'll show you how to do that. We're gonna use some Nuln oil. This is a Citadel Nuln oil. If you're, if you're doing a larger area, maybe switch to a, a natural hairbrush just because it will hold more of the wash itself. So I'm just gonna take a little bit, you know, I'm just doing a little small areas here. so. Don't need to do a ton of areas, but now I'm just directing it where I want it to go at the base of these barrels in between the two here. And if you make a make a mistake because you're working in a small area, you know, you can just grab a clean brush, a dry brush, one that's dry, not a dry, dry brush, but uh, and just wick away the paint and you know, clean it up real quick before it dries and leaves any sort of rings or coffee marks or whatever you want to call it. I guess it depends on the color whether it's a coffee stain. So I'm just working into these little crevices and jump jet ports and all that good stuff, darkening it up. And you, know, you can do more than one layer if you want to do more than one. It's completely up to you how dark you want it to go. If it ends up too dark, you know, just hit it again with the base color, or go back with some silver, and uh, you know, highlight the areas that you thought got too dark. So the other thing that I did on this this scheme as well was some of the, I guess you call them like boots or the, they're not rubber, but the basically the seals on the joints between the knees and the elbows or anywhere like that. Uh, just right over the white will give you. A nice little effect of uh, like a rubber encased or some sort of dust cover or something like along that line so you know you can do this you can do a couple layers but uh, I think it looks good with at least with with one and just kind of direct it so you don't get too much pooling it's gonna go right over that red brown wash that we did earlier because we did the white, you're gonna have a natural highlight already on any ridges or raised panels. 
And you can do this detail anywhere on any like grating or venting or anything like that. Anywhere you think that looks, you know, interesting. Like he didn't have really any, any elbow joints, but definitely has these leg ones here. So, so yeah, so that's a good way to kind of work with two things at the same time. You know, I'm letting this stripe dry. I'm putting these this wash on. That's going to take a long time, to, or not a long time, but a, a decent amount of time to dry. There's some of that uh, coffee staining I was talking about right there. So I just dip my brush in some water. Now I'm just working. Working it away. And if you don't get catch it in time, just go back and touch it up with some of the white. There's no big, you know, issue. It's it's a very thin stain, so it's not gonna take much to cover it up. Just a quick brush stroke. So I'll get most of it, but I'll end up hitting that with a little bit of white. So I'm just looking again over where I put down. And I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, now I'm gonna put some on these joint areas here. And you could do these in metallic if you want. Oftentimes I do. I'm just doing something a little different. Something a little more interesting and not what I normally do, just kind of messing around with letting the paint do the work on this instead of doing two colors and a highlight and a, you know, all those other things that take up some time. All right, so that adds some interesting detail. Maybe this vent down here is going to be, there we go. All right. So I'm happy with that. I'll let that dry. The other thing I did off camera as well that I didn't mention was I put some uh, thinned black into the cockpit glass there just to get that going. I was working with some other stuff and just trying to save some time. All right. So I'm going to continue with these stripes and we will go from there. All right. So as you can see, I've done the rest of the stripes all over the miniature with the um, cadmium brown. So now what I've got in my little cap there is some um, carne marone or tan flesh. And you could call this done if you want. Uh, the, the problem is, with me anyway, is that it's it's very flat looking. And I know the, the white washes out the color here and I do apologize for the video quality. But, um, but as you can see the two colors here, that's the red brown and then there's the tan, is there's a good amount of contrast. So without having to do blending, because again, this is supposed to be something that takes a little bit less time than trying to blend every single panel, uh, and continuing with that, the idea now is that we're gonna add some variation to the stripes. So again, you wanna brush with a good tip. If it doesn't have a good tip, don't try to go and do this. You're just gonna get frustrated. But now, all we're gonna do is choose a direction from the light. So let's say on this, the light's coming from overhead and maybe from slightly behind. So now that's kind of my frame of reference for where I highlight these edges on these stripes. So I'm gonna do the back side, and I'm basically just tracing the edge and looking to get about half, maybe, maybe less if you can. And then what that's gonna do is add a little visual variety. It'll look a little bit more worn. It'll look, you know, a little more natural because the 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 flat color on a uh, on a white contrasting background with of course all the shading and the somewhat subtle blending and things and highlights and things that we did it's just not going to fit quite right so it doesn't mean you can't leave it that way and of course this is just one way of doing it you could you know choose to do an edge highlight you know and, and practice that you can do anything that really that you want i just recommend you do something this is just what i'm doing with this particular scheme and with this particular color just to add a little bit of variety you're like you know, well, and you're not trying to make them two separate stripes like you're trying to do, you know, this color and that color. It's really just something to attract the, the eye and make it look, again, more more realistic, especially, you know, such a small scale. So, and now since the light's coming from the back, I'm just going to choose this right side. And this paint is going to be maybe a little bit thinner because you don't mind a little bit of translucency. It doesn't need to be, it's not a base layer. You're just doing it to add some visual variety so you know, and I'm not going back and making three passes or trying to make sure that it goes over and colors it very very evenly I'm just doing this as a yeah we need a little bit of a little bit of var various brown right here so and as you can see it goes fairly quickly 
So I'm going to continue with this and then we'll move on to the next step. Alright, so as you can see I finished up doing the quick little edge uh, highlight there if you will. Uh, it's, you know, I've done the cleanup on uh, any white or brown or red brown that I wanted to touch up and uh, made sure there is good. I didn't uh, look at it earlier but you can see now those joints and the metallics all have a nice little shadow to them, a little bit of variety, something a little different to break up the, the monotonous white but overall now we've got a nice looking white miniature that's not really white but it didn't take us so long to do and now we've got some some contrast and things to break up and make it look cool. So with that, if you wanted to, now would be a good time to add your, you know, any decals or if you're going to do any emblems or if you're going to paint any of those, that's fine. I'm not going to cover that portion on this. What I'm going to cover is how to do finish the base and what to do with the cockpit glass when it's really, really tiny. So you've seen, uh, you might have seen my video on how to jewel cockpits and stuff, but it didn't really cover when they're just basically little tiny small squares. So we'll cover that. So in order to to do a few things at the same time. Uh, what I've got here is some super glue. Um, this just happened to be the one last tube. I like that the thinner the better for this in this case. Uh, the dollar store stuff is the best. I just happened to be out at this time. Uh, I've got some just regular uh, beach sand. I've got some scissors and I've got some adhesive grass tufts. These are from uh, Gamers Grass. They make really good stuff and they got lots of variety. So uh, what we're going to do is get the base going, get the super glue on there now, and then we'll work on the cockpit and then we'll come back to finish up the base. So I've got my super glue and now all I'm doing is I'm just looking around and I'm, I'm looking to put little blobs of super glue. No, just, you know, it doesn't need to be anything, any old rhyme or reason, but what we're doing is we're going to put some grit with the sand just to look like either because the theme with this is maybe old overgrown urban uh, city or whatever it's you know it hasn't been inhabited for you know however long and nature's kind of taken it back or it's been bombarded in the last you know couple of few years or whatever so now I'm just I'm looking to put something interesting on the base to kind of tie that together so got the super glue on there uh, I'm going to do this off camera, not off camera, but off, off screen here because if I pour this sand on this, I'm going to put sand all over my table. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to just take some sand and I'm going to sprinkle it, I guess I can do it here, over the super glue. And what's wet is going to grab some, some granules and everything else is just going to go right back in. So do as little or as much as you like. Too bad but now you can see we've got little patches of of you know can be small rubble you can use rock you can use whatever i'm just using sand because that's what i did in the other few so now the super glue is gonna is gonna dry so we can move on to working with the canopies or the uh, cockpit glass and ordinarily i would have three or four colors you know something like a you know obviously always have a black and a white because i'll i'll darken and highlight with those and then i'll have my at least two intermediate colors so in this case uh, we don't need the black because we've already put black in the window and it's so small that, that it's really not going to make a difference. Black if you mess up, I guess. Uh, and then really we're going to focus on these two. And if you really, really want, you can do a dot of white. So there we go. Now it's just these two. And we're looking at just a little bit of a darker color. I'm going to use green in this case. And then a little bit of your highlight color just to draw the contrast amongst the three that are going to be there because we've already got black. So now I'm just going to pick a side. So my, I'm going to have this the lower left corner be where the where the highlight's going to go. It's probably a little too much paint on my brush. Again, if you have a fine detail brush that has a good tip, this is the time to use it. And I'm not trying to fill the whole square, but I'm also not being super, super careful. And the reason is, is it's such a small area that, I mean, unless you're just getting down there and looking at it with, you know, a camera or a you know, some sort of magnifying device that it really doesn't doesn't matter. So, so I'm just looking to put it in the lower corner, and really, it's not it's not doing a whole lot because it is dark and it's already there's already black in there. But it is adding a little bit of difference. You just can't see it very well on camera, and to the naked eye, it, it really isn't as visible but once we put that other green on there because there is a, a transition in there it will 
help make it uh, look a little like you did a more blending than you know you didn't do any blending so now I'm just getting my other paints and here again you don't want super 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 thin um, not, not like trying to glaze or to blend anything you want it probably just straight out of the bottle again test it on your on your hand or on a piece of palette paper or something like that if it doesn't you know capillary action doesn't take it away then good you're, you're good so now I'm taking I want less paint on my brush and now I'm just aiming for this bottom area Essentially, I'm trying to paint even less. If it ends up just being a little dot, make it a little dot. Don't don't try to force it. All right. So now, when I look at this, there's I can see that when I look at it from a distance, there's something down there, which is good. So now you can, if you wanted to, you can leave that how that is. If you want to make it brighter, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily maybe take pure white, but I would maybe take a little bit of white and uh, just a touch of green. I'm going to leave these as they are right now uh, because I think that's what I did on the other ones. Maybe, maybe I'll brighten it up, but uh, if you were to do that, again, it would just be the same thing, but now you would just try to put it in the very, very, very lower edge corner and the, sm the smallest dot you could make. So that's how I would do that. So now we've got um, to move on back to our base here. And again, you've probably seen me use flock and things like that and static grass, but this is it's this is still kind of drying, but it's it's pretty much done. So now these are I think four millimeter scale tufts. And for the most part, they're pretty good, but oftentimes I think they're a little too large for some of the areas I want to work with. So that's what the scissors are for. So I just take, you know, I pick one. They've got some adhesive on the back, but I still use super glue anyway. But really I can get two or three tufts out of this and I just grab one and usually I cut it in half or so a little um, little uh, static leaves are gonna go everywhere it's so like that one we all cut in half all right so now I've got kind of three tufts right now to work with and you know, go back. I like to use super glue regardless, even though there's some adhesive on here. I just don't, uh, I don't think it works as well as it should. That's just me. Or if you're going onto a rough surface or uneven surface. So I just put a little super glue on there and then I'm going to find a spot I think looks good. I, I want to kind of accompany this rubble area because maybe it's growing up through the, through the concrete there. And then you can kind of just, oops, sorry, I was out of shot there. You can kind of just mash it down and you can kind of dictate where the, where these go. And then because you cut it, there's going to be some loose pieces, but you can also trim it with scissors if it's too, you know, if you don't like where these wayward deals are going, you can just pluck them out too if you have tweezers or whatever. Just make it make it look how you like it, but the nice thing is is that you can cut these down so you don't have to go with these huge ones, and it allows you to have a little more variety with, you know, small and large looking terrain type features here, so there uh, the other thing to avoid too is when you do these try to avoid just always doing three uh, you know more or less is always good but oftentimes people tend to put things down in threes i don't know why it is some sort of sure some sort of psychological answer to it you can put it right on top of the rubble too if you want make it look like it's growing out of the exposed concrete do one more real quick that so the other thing you can do too is if you want you can cut a flat edge and then you can bring it right up to the edge of the miniature's foot or treads or whatever you know if it's a tank and then I can just bring it right up to the edge here and then it looks like the miniature or you know the mech tank or whatever is standing on it kind of crushed it so that's kind of neat um, You will probably notice that there's, uh, like, if you let this dry completely, which you should, uh, is that you're going to get some some super glue halo, with some of that little sereno acrylate, you know, that kind of rings. It's almost like basically it's coffee staining for glue. Uh, if you get that, no big deal, because we're not done with this yet, because 
we're gonna stain this grit down with some earth shade or a dark brown wash and also we're gonna darken the crater. Uh, I did it off camera but the uh, I threw a little bit of when I was doing the, the null oil I threw a little bit at the very bottom of this crater just to give it a little bit more shadow because the the brown tone won't quite darken as deep. Um, that's completely up to you. And then of course you know if you want the variety you can you can put another wash on this concrete anywhere here or there and make it look like it's more weathered and, and whatnot. So all right, so I'm good with, with that for now. Uh, I'm grab some Agrax Earthshade. You can use any, you know, you can use an Army Painter uh, Strong Tone. Any dark brown type of wash, one that you made yourself is fine. And now what I'm looking to do is Get the wash in the areas where I want to darken. So first I'm gonna hit this crater just because I want the edges of this crater to kind of stand out. I went to the effort to make it look like it's there. So might as well make sure that gets hit first because I might come back and hit that one more time, but we'll see how it turns out. And that's the nice thing about these washes. And you can just put this right on top. Again, make sure the super glue is dry, otherwise you're gonna ruin your brush because once the water hits it, it's gonna stick to it. And then you can bring it out if you want, follow along any of the ridges or any of the surface textures and then the other thing you can do too is put it at the base of your grass tufts and that'll add a little bit of coverage especially if you get some of that super glue halo that I was talking about in fact I think I have one I can show you that sure enough on this panther here you can see there's white right there that's where the super glue dried so you know just a little wash on it if it doesn't cover it the first time put it on again but yeah I have a few spots here and there that ended up with some glue showing it it's no sweat cover it up with a little bit of dark brown the other nice thing about using this dark brown is that again it, it, it draws the eye to where you want it to be which is the actual miniature you can also go around the base of the feet if you want to add a little bit of a shadow effect or if maybe some of the paint got just barely up the edge of the foot. So now I'm just working this wash into the base. Found some loose grains of sand. Didn't quite get to with the glue but just work with it until you're happy with the uh, with the result um, you know let it dry if uh, you need to go back and do another a little bit of touch up here and there, whatever, that's fine. But uh, don't don't just keep piling on wet and wet. It won't, won't make any, any changes until it's fully cured there. But that, over here. I think that looks pretty good. So what I'll end up doing now is I'm gonna go back and hit it, the uh, edges with my primer, polyurethane primer. I'm gonna add some emblems and some decals and then I'm going to clear coat it and it'll be finished. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like us on Facebook, subscribe to us here. We appreciate uh, you guys' uh, suggestions and comments. We're always looking for uh, new ideas for videos and recommendations. Let us know in the comments. We appreciate you stopping by and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.